Hi, this is Brian and welcome back to Prater. And today we're going to be going over our fine grinder rotors, installing actually into the unit, and then a couple aspects as far as if we change blades or if we are going ahead and tightening the blades. So on our M51 model here, we have what's called a retaining ring and we have one on the front and we have one on the back. Now, if we were starting this fresh and we're to where we were installing new blades, all we would simply have to do is leave one of the retaining rings on, make sure that they're properly tightened, and we do have to use a torque wrench for that. These size bolts for this specific one will have a certain torque, specific torque uh, spec for them in our manual. Just refer to our manual and whatever size fine grinder model you have, and it'll allow, it'll tell you on there what the recommended uh, what the recommended torque spec is for these bolts. So once we go ahead and have that, uh, what we would call the bottom or the back part of the rotor, that retaining ring and the bolts properly tightened, we could simply go ahead and get this on the table. Now one aspect with handling these rotors, and we don't have it here, but if we had this on the table, we would want to put something into the middle of it just to simply get the weight of the rotor off of the table so the blades aren't touching the table. A very important aspect as far as too is that you never want to have these blades on the floor or trying to roll it across the floor to get it to machine. We want to be very gentle when we pick these up and you actually make sure that we're looking at how we can properly and safely pick this up um, without damaging the blades. We have a chart that will be also in the manual and it will be referenced off the, the specific size model that you have and how many blades you do have in your rotors because each rotor has a different amount of blades. So based off of whatever model that you have, you're going to start off with the graph which starts off at 1 and then goes 2, 3, 4, 5 and you see the staggering as far as the numbers. Now, how we stagger those is based off of the weight. Now, with this is a brand new model and then we we're getting this for the first time, all these blades, if you were to take them out, you will see weights that are written on them that we put onto a scale. And how we distribute those is basically from the lightest would be number one to the heaviest, which would be number 36. So in that sequence, we're gonna start off with the lightest blade all the way to the heaviest blade in that sequence from one to 36. And this is very important as far as installing those blades back in if you were to doing it on your site because of the balancing and vibration aspect of it. Over the years, we've noticed that if we follow this technique and this uh, graph right here, that going forwards and putting it in the machine and trying to do any type of balancing or trim balance is just gonna make the process a little bit easier because now you have your weights evenly distributed amongst the diameter of this rotor. So once we go ahead and use this chart and we have our blades all installed, we're going to go ahead and put the top retaining ring on as well too. Also using the recommended torque spec that's in the manual for your specific model. Once we have all those tightened down, a good practice before we go ahead and install it is if we have this up is we're going to go ahead and simply check each individual blade to make sure that we don't have any loose. If we find any loose, what could potentially happen, cause and effects, is maybe one of these isn't tightened down all the way, or maybe there was some debris or material that's underneath the retaining ring that didn't get cleaned out properly. Maybe there was a burr, but we have to go ahead and try to eliminate all those aspects to make sure that we can track down what's making this blade not tight to the rotor. Um, something else that could happen over time, and the use of these rotors is these slots that the blades are sliding into could get damaged over time or they, they might not be the recommended uh, thickness or depth that we machined the rotor to from the initial start of the, the building of it. So now that we have the rotor tightened down, we know that we have no loose blades. Next, we would go ahead and be able to install it into our fine grinder body. This is another aspect where we want to be careful and safe with while we're handling things. On the M51, the model is a little, it's not, the rotor is not that heavy, but as we get up to our 76 and our 101, the rotor is going to be a lot heavier where you're not going to be able to grab it by hand. One nice aspect of what we offer and makes it a little bit easier with our fine grinder rotors is you have the teardrop design in the actual rotor, and as we get bigger, you have a point where you can come in with fork truck 
uh, and pick it up in this aspect here or you can put a strap in through one of these up through here obviously paying attention to where we at with the blades because we don't want to be putting any tension or grabbing and possibly uh, twisting and bending these blades making sure the strap is within in between the blades and not coming into contact with it so that we can properly lift that up the other aspect that we offer too here is this is just an example of a shaft extension that's going to allow me to get the rotor onto the shaft extension and make it a little bit easier to walk it up onto the actual shaft that's in the bearing housing now the other thing that we offer too with the shaft extension is an a-frame so that we can brace it out here before we go ahead and get it on and this aspect with the 51 using proper lifting techniques I could simply take it off the table walk it over to the shaft extension now obviously with the A-frame we'd have to remove that to get the rotor on but then once the rotor's on we come back and put the A-frame to support the shaft here once we have that all situated then we could simply walk the rotor back up to the shaft that's on the bearing housing sometimes you might have to give it a little lift up once we get it onto the shaft that's in the bearing housing in the body we can walk the rotor on once the rotor is fully onto the shaft and the bearing housing go ahead and remove our center hub or not our center hub our shaft extension here is our center hub that we're gonna go ahead and lock down the rotor to the shaft that's in the bearing housing. Same thing with our retaining rings. There is a torque spec. The torque spec's gonna change depending on the bolt size, and the bolt size is gonna change based off of our models down from the 21 all the way up to our M101. So just refer to our manual and it'll give you the exact torque spec that you're gonna use on your wrench. Before we go ahead and put that center hub on, we have to get our keys aligned one aspect when you're doing this if you have somebody with you somebody can go on the other side and simply hold that pulley that's on the other side so that we can go ahead and get those keys lined up once we were to get the keys lined up we'd be able to engage the key after we got the key engaged we're going to go ahead and simply get the center hub started once we get it locked down by hand this is when we will go ahead and take our torque wrench and whatever size get our torque wrench situated to whatever torque spec is uh, recommended for that bolt size and then go ahead and simply start tightening that down it's very important to not use an impact you always have to use a torque wrench when locking down the center hub so that this does not come loose or possibly back out during operation because that would be very detrimental to the machine now that we got our rotor installed we got our center hub properly locked down the next aspect of the machine would be installing our ring sieve, would be installing our uh, screen assembly. This screen assembly here is our six jaw with triangles, perforated screen. Important aspect of this is that if you're going ahead and installing this into the machine, is always making sure that the triangles are in the direction of the rotation of what the rotor is going to be rotating. So in this instance, with this, this specific machine, our M51, we have a low airflow base, and on this specific one, it's going to be rotating clockwise. So with the triangles on the screen right now, they're facing in a direction of counterclockwise. Before I go ahead and install, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I flip it to where the point of the triangle is facing in clockwise rotation, and then simply go ahead and bring this over here once we get it on to the body we could simply go ahead and slide it now if you want to pan in here really quick the most important thing with our screen assemblies is there's this part of the back ring and there's actually a part of the body that's actually machined so that way we know that this is going to be properly engaged the other aspect of it is too is there's going to be on this one there's three bolts that we'll see on the back side that we're going to tighten the screen frame to the body. It's a good idea to try to get those, those holes lined up before you go ahead and get it fully in there. And once we get it, the holes lined up, you'll feel 
that screen frame engage in that part of the back wall of the body where it's machined for that to set into. It's very important that we get that situated and set properly. Once we were to get the screen frame in there, we come to the back side and we have one, two, three holes here that we'd simply put our bolts in, get those started, and then once you get those started into the screen frame, there's already drilled and tapped holes that are on the, the ring itself. You'll feel that starting to pull that screen frame to the back wall. Same thing as anything with tightening. You want to start, but you don't want to overdo it at one point. Kind of work your way to different points. We tighten a little bit here, tighten a little bit on this one, and then come back to this one so that we're uh, pulling that in evenly with each other because we don't want to have it cocked to any degree as far as inside that body. Once we have everything tightened, now we have our screen frame in, we have our rotor in. Another checks and balance that we do as far as on our machines, as far as in the fine grinders, is it's very imperative that we always know what the gap is between the blade and the jaw itself. And a simple tool that we use is a set of filler gauges that have different sizes on them. And based off of the size of the machine, each one's going to have a different size gap. This is a nice checks and balance as far as if, you know, getting to it. another point is if you did a bearing housing change and you took the old bearing housing off, you put a new one on, now we're going to go ahead and check and make sure that we're getting concentric gaps all around the rotor. And this specific one, we have six points with the six jaws. If you had a three jaw in there, then you would be going off your three points or wherever those three jaws lined up. So depending on whatever size you have, you could kind of get an idea of where you might want to start. Um, the nice thing about it is that before this comes out of our factory to your site, this will all be done so you have a referencing point as far as what it originally started at and then maybe where you're having it now so that, that way we can figure out maybe what's going on to help you assist you either over phone or through email. It's always important that we pay attention to the gaps because if those start to get tighter than what was sent from the factory, we could be running in the risk of potentially the blades coming in contact with the jaws or we're just not going to be able to grind efficiently because it's too tight and it might be causing either excess heat or grind or burning of the product. So once we have it situated, we can pick whatever point we want to start, but when we do it, we also make sure that we have pen and paper with us so that we're referencing the different points. You can use as far as where it lines up on a clock as a reference. Um, that's typically what we will do as far as where we're writing down and what the gap is. Once we pick a point, you simply just start off with whatever depth and kind of put it in between the blade and the jaw. And as you can see there, that's still got a little bit more gap. And all you're simply going to do is keep adding up different size shims until you get to a point where it's really hard to get it in between the blade and the jaw. And then that's where you know you're going to be at a point where you can go ahead and add up the different thicknesses of the filler gauges and you know what that specific gap is on that spot at that jaw and wherever you're referencing from. Now sometimes when we get it in, ideally we're looking for it to be concentric. There might be a little variances as you know you get to the bigger machines where it might be a little bit tighter here and as long as it's within you know a couple thousands we don't want to start seeing crazy differences from the top and the sides to the bottom because that could be indicating us to us that our bearing housing might not be fully engaged properly and concentric and we might have to look into that as far as maybe that's off and it's not centered because that will allow this rotor in here to sit situated maybe where it's a little too close. But essentially what's nice like I said is that this is all done at a factory before it's sent out to you so you have a starting and a referencing point so that we can constantly check and trend those gaps as time goes on and if anything pops up you're going to have that information when everything gets sent to you. You could take that and formulate a trend as you go forward and that's kind of like a nice checks and balance that maybe might throw something off that maybe it's indicating that I got to look at something else besides you know what's going on inside here with the rotor and the screen frame.